So you may remember what the board looked like previously before it was cleaned. It, it was really grubby and nasty. It's been thoroughly cleaned. It looks a tremendous amount better. It feels better. It doesn't have kind of that grimy, oily feel it had before. I want to do some basic DC voltage measurements on here. Uh, but I want to start out looking for shorts. So currently I've got the ground lead disconnected from the switching power supply we're going to use. And I'm going to look for shorts between ground and plus 5. I find this interesting. There's 516 ohms across the 5 volt rail with all the logic out. So that kind of says this is the, the tantalum caps perhaps uh, causing problems. You know, I don't know. I have to look at the schematics. I don't know what, what the two large tantalums here do. Let me get back to ground. And look at the minus 12 and it's open. The plus 12 and it's open as I would expect it to be. So let me hook the ground back up here to the switching power supply we're going to use. All this wiring is temporary. And I'll verify the wiring here again. Again, common comes to ground, plus 5 to plus 5, plus 12 to plus 12, and minus 12 is blue to V3, and V3 on this supply happens to be minus 12. Uh, this switch here is reset. It won't be used in this case. It's the reset switch that was attached to the unit uh, when it came in the mail to me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to unplug this line cord. And we're going to hook it up here. And we're going to get back to volts. And I want volts DC. It's DC plus AC. I just need straight DC. And we've got a bunch of TTL devices and pin 14 should be plus 5. Pin 7 in this case should be ground. That's a 14 pin dip. And if I plug in the power, hopefully I will see plus 5 here. Uh, and we do. So there's the 5 volts from the switching power supply coming through. So there's multiple voltage rails required including a negative 5 and the negative 5 has to be being regulated off of the negative 12. I'm guessing by this Zener diode down here. I'm pretty confident that's a Zener sitting there. I could confirm in the schematic. But what that will generate is the negative 5 that's required. So I've gone through basically devices where the pinouts are kind of odd and I've captured uh, what you know red is plus five green is ground blue is VBB which is minus five and the what's plus 12 there that color printed poorly uh, but anyhow we should be able to look at the 4116 sockets up here VSS is ground minus five would be on pin one so hopefully when I plug the power supply in, we'll see minus 5 volts here. be easier if I had a power switch. And we don't. VDD. See, VSS is ground. Oh no, uh, v oh, yeah, VSS is ground. VDD is plus 12. Oh, I'm okay. VSS. I got to do this correct now. God damn it. I can't read. That's such a poor. VSS is ground. We should see plus 5 here. And what the heck? Okay. 
Hmm. Uh, let's go to AC volts. Do we have incoming AC? We do not. It's blown the fuse. So that's the second time it's blown the fuse. I actually did a pre-power before we started recording here. Uh, which says to me, a tantalum is most likely bad. Which is why we'd be seeing that 515 ohms or so. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just unplug the power cord. I'm just going to release all of the wiring here on this side. Well, this gets deeply into why you pre-test these kind of things. I'm going to completely unhook this and just set it back out of the way. I'm going to get the soldering station fired up. I'm going to go back to ohms and ground to plus five. It's still got that 500 and something ohms, which it just shouldn't have. That's just not correct. Uh, let's take a peek at the schematics. Figure out what capacitors are what. See anything there that looks related to decoupling or power? Don't see anything there related to decoupling or power. I have not looked at these schematics with any detail. smaller versions of the schematics in here as well. I saw nothing in the schematics themselves that, that looked to be related to decoupling or power. So we're just going to have to kind of go through and figure it out for ourselves. So the odds are really good. rail these are on what the heck Just not getting good contact on it. How are those not tied together? Are half these tantalums in? No, they're in the way the salt screen shows. And then this is going to go here and here. That's a ground. Okay. So th these points are ground. So this point here. Why can't I get continuity even? Which power rail are you? Oh, that would be ground. That makes sense. Okay. So where is this side going? Oh, 
I am confused. That's a ground. That's a ground. So the disc cap is on plus five. It looks like, yeah, the disc caps are on plus five, as I would expect. And these tantalums have to be on the... So ground is in the middle here. And with the positive lead here going to ground, this is going to be for a negative rail. This has got to be for negative 12. There's just nothing else it could be for. Or for negative 5, I guess. Okay, and it is. So there's a Zener diode here and a dropping resistor. So that's what should be producing the negative 5. I should see plus 12. And I'm not. Why? Oh no, I should see negative 12. Negative 12 there. Ground. So this is negative 5 right here. And it comes to. Okay, so it's negative 5, negative 5, negative 5 bulk, negative 5 bulk. And then there should be plus 12. It's going to be to the plus, plus 12, plus 12, plus 12, and plus 12. Okay. So I understand those. Let me actually mark up the drawing so we can capture this. it out again and actually draw it into the schematic. So minus 12 should come to right there. So this is minus 12 V there. There's going to be ground right here. And this gives me minus 5 volts here. And we believe that minus 5 comes to here, to here, to here, and to here, which it does. Doggone it. kind of gets into then what are these two large tantalums here doing we're gonna have to I guess ohm them out so I can't tell what they're doing. Huh. So there's a those two inside pins are ground. Oh, they look 
maybe to have something to do with this mess over here. Okay, that's quite interesting. So what I want to do now is kind of jury rig up plus five off of a, a, a better controllable power supply. And I need to figure out how I'm going to do this. simple. I really don't. Uh, the screwdriver. five hopefully there'll be enough of a gap that I won't end up with them shorted together accidentally since it seems to be what's here. And of course, it's going to be stubborn. plus five this will bring across ground and plus five I know you can't see uh, the power supply apologies for that let me turn the power supply on give it a chance to boot up here and right now the current limit set at 1.2 amps which is uh, way too high there's 100 milliamps I want to get back to volts that's AC I want DC supply and it came up to 5 volts and it says we're drawing less than 10 milliamps so why is that switcher blowing the fuse absolutely no issue here certainly not in compliance I want to get back to voltage control and 5.3 volts is as high as I can go uh, it's still drawn 10 uh, or you know 10 milliamps or so which surprises me there may be some active circuitry here I'm just not aware of 
so the question becomes why does that keep blowing the fuse is it th this just maybe it doesn't like being connected directly into a switching power supply I am not sure because uh, I do not see an issue here power supply off <coughs> It didn't like, you know, wake up and power supply go into compliance or say there was a bit of current draw, but it wasn't anything excessive. So we will try something else. It may be stupid, but we'll find out. Wouldn't be the first thing I did today that was stupid. So I'm certain it won't be the last. So I have a different power receptacle here. which is also fused and it's got a very heavy fuse in it very heavy fuse so we're going to take these three leads just clip them out of there that is no longer used The equipment this came out of is long gone. This, like I said, this won't be going back into that equipment, so I've got no problem here. Kind of hacking this up this way. back over disconnect this inlet here with the RFI and everything on it and we'll go straight to is that marked inside it's not but the green is frame ground power cord we're using is marked and the neutral comes in on the white line didn't I just wrap those together a second ago And that would mean the line is then coming in on red, which it is, and it's where the fuse is, so that all makes sense. Say so this is all very temporary. So the wire tie here is going to make this really difficult. So blue is V3 is minus 12. This wire is a little bit large for these. And ground will be 
next um, and plus five is next. Uh, Not giving me such fits. And that then means plus twelve will be on the fourth lead. And I'm not even gonna worry about wiring up the reset switch at the moment. There's no reason for it. So V3, minus 12, V3 is blue, 2 minus 12. That should be confirmed in the drawing. Minus 12 ground, plus 5, plus 12. So we're back around to power cord. Place where I should find plus five. We're on DC volts. Hopefully, we're on camera. Hopefully, I won't see smoke and fire. Five volts, as expected. So we've got plus twelve. 11.6 if it's unloaded is what causes that drift on the supply. We should see minus 5 down here. And we do. Now if we come around and actually look at DRAM sockets, we should have plus 5 to here. We should have, I believe, plus 12 to here. And we should have minus 5 to here. And we don't. Why don't we have the minus 5? Minus 5 is making it 2. Is it coupling caps? VBB. Minus five, minus five. So why don't I have minus five right there? So there is an issue, perhaps with that socket. And what you're seeing here is what I intend to do with the entire board. I intend to walk through the entire board. Oops. making sure we have power everywhere. Why don't we have minus five there? There's definitely something uh, trace issue or because we have the minus five on the decoupling cap but it's not making it to that pad and that right there would be enough to keep the system from running. So with power applied I'm going to walk through all of the TTL positions and I'm going to check both ground and plus 5 and that way I know both ground and 5 volt are getting to the socket. If I used a common ground and the ground pin was floating I wouldn't know it so by testing directly at the socket for both we get the best result. Almost all TTL devices have ground in the lower right hand corner and VCC in the upper left hand. It doesn't matter whether it's 14 pin, 16 pin, 
18 pin, 20 pin, 22 pin, that's almost always the case. There's a few stupid exceptions that should never have been allowed in the standard, but they are what they are. This is a row of TTL here. So these kind of checks, especially with something this old, are well worth doing. It's easier to check the power rails here with the chips out because I can just touch the leads right down into the socket. I'm not trying to touch on IC pins that I'm going to slip off from. So uh, I guess we can come walk through here. I believe this will even... So that socket there was for uh, 8116 baud rate generator, and instead it had a cr an oscillator plugged in there that I assume just generated a fixed frequency, but I'm not seeing power on, oh, all the pins were occupied, so I have no idea which pins actually have power on them. We'll have to come back to that. The more work I do now to find issues and correct them before we stuff the parts back in, the higher the odds will have it work after. Uh, I am planning to... That's interesting. What is that chip there that's got 12 volts sitting there? Oh, these are the 1488, 1489s. So I do expect there to be funny voltages here. Uh, I just don't remember the pinouts. But yeah, those are 1488 and 1489. They do the 5 volt to plus or minus 12 volt, the RS232 level translation. So they don't have standard TTL pinouts. Did I look at these across here? I'm pretty sure I did. Pretty sure I did. Let's move on to here. I'm chatting rather than paying attention, which results in me losing my place. Yeah, that missing minus 5 on that one DRAM would be enough to uh, keep the system from working. Anything, you know, it, the monitor might come up. The monitor u uses high RAM. Depending on what bank that is, if that's, you know, if that's the high RAM bank, the monitor most likely wouldn't run. If it's the low RAM bank, the monitor might actually run. I just don't know. Uh, but I would certainly think that CPM would be unhappy. You know, if it's a, if it's a CPM 2.2 compiled for 64K, uh, and that's the upper bank, we probably have issues. If it's compiled for 48K, it might run with that bank being bad. I probably already checked these, but I should have been more systematic about this. I know, I'm not speaking, I'm focused. Uh, I'm actually thinking about what the issue is with that minus 5 on that one DRAM. Uh, 
I may just go ahead and reflow the solder on that pin. See if that corrects it. It could be a cracked solder joint there. It could be a broken lead in the socket. I, of course, can't get into this socket. Check the power rails. So what the heck, let's uh, unplug this, Flip. oh, the, it's not soldered, look at that, that pin was never soldered, wow, I wonder if he ever got the system running, that pin right there, that would be enough potentially to have kept the system from ever running, so pin is just not soldered. You know, soldered all those years ago, and it's not like I haven't missed a pin soldering. I've missed plenty in my time. Ah! Go in there and stay. The wand fell out. Let's flip this back over. That issue could have just hounded me trying to figure out. Oh, yeah, it's plugged back in. We should see minus five. It's easy to do when you got as many pins as are on this board. There's over a hundred ICs, so there's probably in the range of 1,500 solder joints on this board. It's easy to miss one. You know, I believe the gentleman this originally belonged to has passed, based on correspondence with the seller. She said it was her dad's. I interpreted it as her dad had passed. She was wanted to make sure it came to a good home. Uh, you know, it's come to a good home. I hope to get the system running. You all know, for me, the fun is getting this stuff running. It's not necessarily using it. Uh, I mean, there is vintage stuff I use occasionally. Uh, if you go way back to the I'm to talk about here, the Model 4, so the Tandy Model 4P machine that we designed and, and replaced, you know, the switching power supply with modern switchers and, and designed that carrier board to make it a you know a seamless installation. It just drop in. Uh, back I, several, several months ago, I ordered a set of floppies from Australia that have the high-density games on it. We put a high-density board in the machine, and I've been wanting to demo that board. And months and months and months ago, I want to say f over four months ago now, I ordered uh, those high-density, or, or the high-resolution games from a gentleman in Australia. They arrived today. You know, I've been being really patient. COVID uh, has been a thing. Uh, it's really messed up shipping around the world. Stuff from Australia is just taking insane amounts of time to get to any place. I hadn't contacted him because I was just trying to be really patient, but I've been thinking more and more about, you know, it's time to contact him and say, this never arrived, what can we do? They showed up today. It's just like holy moly. So uh, in a future video, we'll break the Model 4P out and we'll look at some of the high-res games. And the Model 4P, of course, has that controllable beeper, for lack of a better term, the buzzer, 
So some of these games might even make some rudimentary sounds. I just don't know. But we'll do that together at some point in a future video. Well, I haven't seen a, t a, a tantalum cap explode yet, which is good. I wish I knew what these two big ones down here did. I have to go look in the schematic. I cannot believe there was a a pin that was never soldered. I really hope the gentleman got this thing working and then used it and enjoyed it and it didn't just end up on a shelf as given up on for not working because it would be a shame all those to sit all those years and not be used because there was a missed solder joint. And you know, I did a pretty good visual inspection of the back of the board. Uh, didn't look at every pin specifically, that gets really hard to do, but I didn't notice it. <clears throat> so catching it here, it's a good thing. We're almost through with these. I'm checking all three rails on the DRAMs. The 4116s will not work without all three rails. And then we'll move on to the 2716s. There should be plus five there. There should be plus five there. So there's VCC. And in read, VPP ends up at plus five, and it is. Uh, VCC. VPP, VCC, VPP, I can't test that socket. If you look at the CTC, it's got ground on pin 5 and plus 5 exactly opposite. Pin 5, oh, I've got the leads backwards, it should have been this way, and we'll find plus 5. We look at the 2716s, if we go to the Z80, one, so pin 29, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. If I go to there, or maybe it's here. There it is. There's the plus 5 for the Z80. For the PIOs, ground is on 26, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. We learned that hard lesson on the... Uh, SD systems, let me count this out, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, that should be plus 5. We learned our lesson, I've got these swapped, on the SD systems, uh, that Z80 board when I got the PIO and the uh, Z80 in the wrong sockets. See, there's a PIO here, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. I believe this is the PIO here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it is. And then we've got the CTC in this socket. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And VCC is straight across and down one. Or no. I uh, got that backwards. VDD is pin nine and straight across and down one. It should be power. And there's power. We've already looked at the sockets for the 2114s. Uh, the floppy disk controller is the only other one we need to worry about. And it's got ground. It's got plus 5 down here. It's got minus 5 up here. And it's got plus 12 over here. And it does. So. I think we're okay. Uh, we've walked through all of that. Everything makes sense. We found an issue and corrected it. This does mean I need to go back and do a much more detailed look with better magnification for other missed solder joints. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, I think at this point, power the system down and think about where I want to go next on this. I do want to do a good visual inspection. The other thing I prepared was this. So this is taking uh, 
the basic board layout out of the manual and then I put in readable text for all the IC locations and then inside of it the chip type and then verified it you know there's the 1488s and 89s down here actually of course goes this way like we were talking about for the the the, the uh, Z80 SIO 0 it sits here so that's the serial interface and then the line drivers for it uh, but this will allow me to stuff this I am intending to stuff as much of the board as I can with clean logic and that way I can avoid the pin rod issues like on this device right here where the pins are just black and nasty I want to avoid as much pin rod as I can I'm gonna to have to look see if I have a couple PIOs with clean pins uh, one of the PIOs is the parallel port here it's not as important the other one is keyboard and floppy controller this one needs to work to get a parallel keyboard working on it something's making noise like it's an air compressor outside uh, So, I don't know that there's much more we can check. Uh, I guess I can go look for those two C140 and C141, those two canons. See if we can figure out what the heck they are. That's reset. That's just to generate a nice clean reset signal. C141 literally was one of those two, wasn't it? C141 is a 68 microfarad cap. It is used as so that, so power power on reset is that 68 microfarad cap and R48 to plus five. So this is what generates power on reset. When the power first comes on, the capacitor is discharged. It takes a bit of time for it to charge up to 5 volts because there's a current limiting resistor here, 10K. So sometime after power comes up, that capacitor will charge high enough that the 74 LS14 here will see that pin become a 1 and generate a reset. So basically take, it'll start with reset low and then take it high as it should. So one of them's there. So it's not power supply to coupling as I kind of thought maybe it was. Uh, meter wants to turn off. We've got what I believe to be video generation up here. Actually, that's clock. No, I'm not sure what actually is being generated by that. But we explained one of those two caps. I'm so used to seeing large tantalums as decoupling. That not seeing those as decoupling is quite interesting. So, start clock generator, dividers. This is I was just about to say this has got to be a video CRD driver, the video RAM. This 2716 is the character ROM. Uh, this is fully stuffed, so it should have the composite video. Yeah, it's got the transistor in there. I do believe there's a 2N2222 sitting here. There's a transistor there, and yeah, there's a transistor there. So that okay, that so the video is stuffed, including composite video. There was a note in the manual here that that was optional. So I'll chain up a couple of one shots there. Go back and look at those again. 450 picofarad, 180 picofarad. 68k pull up, 39k pull up. So those are generating s video timing stuff. It looks like again, acting. Uh, they're 123, so they're one shots. Uh, acting as kind of a delay line or something maybe. C142. There it is. 33 picofarad. So it's a polarized device, and it bothers me it's not drawn on here as a polarized device, but there it is. Uh, part of the video circuit. Okay. We've explained those. They're sitting near the power inputs, so I can be excused for thinking they were power supply related. 4116s.
looks like an extra 10k may have been added there or 35 probably wasn't drawn on the schematic but it's on the board uh, the keyboard input so yeah keyboard and floppy PIO is U111 U111 I actually want to label these a bit more as I work on this drawing if I can find the pencil KBE floppy disk controller. I'll actually label that here. Uh, it is what I thought it was. It's got the CTC option installed. I.O. creates that parallel port 3884-0 is the UART it should be labeled it's a 3884 actually I added that label later on I know it's marked with the, the MK number uh, the line drivers and receivers Looks like it generates two. Oh, it's a dual. It's a dual, so there's two full serial ports on it. Nice. And of course, the board layout. This is what I started with, and I manually cleaned it up to look like this. So it went from. You know, really blown up here, and I will blow. I may blow the schematic sections up as well to get a better view. Uh, but you can see the U numbers and stuff are really hard to read in here. And I just cleaned all that up. It was a lot of work to get all the you know device indicators in and the device types, but it was worth the effort. It'll be really worth the effort when I stuff the board. So I drone on and on here probably for an hour. This will probably end up being a multi-part video. If you've made it all the way to this point and the one or more pieces of this, I appreciate it. And we'll talk soon.